welcome here. You may be asking yourself, why do I lose such squalor if I am the one who is meant to bring solace to the heart of the architect during crisis upon the matrix? <laughs> They didn't know the divinity laden within my psyche, potentially laden here due to knowledge of the very depth of quantum complexity. You think I want to leave in clean, hygienic, puritan circumstances of empty rooms? No. I desire the complications of mayhem and a touch of chaos in the complex. into the hearts of reality and understand the beginnings of the mind of God. It is like chemistry with physicality, being biology as one entwined, embraced, developed, stratospheric in the infinite sky of forever. I'm a Catholic bitch, except I'm not to get out of my face. Okay? Oh, this hasn't gone well. No, the energy is not repeated in my psychic form. I must chill. No. No, no. You see, the problem is with certain. Oh, this is going well. No. I'm just going to clam up like an old fucking dingbat. Because for what? What have I got to say? What could I possibly say to mortality and humanity in this juncture of reality that could provide the sustenance of profundity you need to carry you on to a holy allegory of time? Oh, a loss and a lack. <sighs> Bereft and performed. Do you not understand? Do you not feel? Oh yeah, this is what I was going to talk about. I'm sorry about that. I've completely forgotten what I was talking about, but now I have remembered. I want you all, if you haven't seen it, to f see the film Arrival. It is amazing. It's by Dennis Villeneuve, it's from 2016, and it's about what happens if we get visited by a form of higher alternate intelligence. It's categorically one of the most interesting films about alien invasion, or the concept of alien invasion that I've ever seen in my life. It really is staggeringly good. Okay, it's made by top acumen, 10,000% IQ factor from America, which is quite rare these days, I think you'll find. Made Arrival, okay? Arrival is what the definition of cinema should be about in some respects. It is up there with Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ, Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List, and loads of other amazing films. It's really quite critically bright. It's so intelligent. They will have you on the edge of your seat if you can manage to know what's going on. And you will understand every little part of it. It is a staggering achievement by Dennis Villeneuve, who went on to make June, which is just, I haven't seen it, but visually what I have seen looks just like Thunderpants Hurrah out of the Neo Star Wars Uber God. Right, the guy is a visionary genius. He's now, I think he actually, if there, if there was like a run period, right, you've got Steven Spielberg and George Lucas in the 80s going head to head on uber prophetic cinematic knowledge, right, but then come the 90s and George Lucas drops back, Steven Spielberg slows a bit, but James Cameron roars into view, right, and then we go into the noughties, and James Cameron, Steven Spielberg hanging in there, George Lucas coming back, but kind of gives it off to Disney because so, he can't be asked to direct. He never really did direct that many films. And then you've got 
Dennis, Dennis Villeneuve coming through like an outsider, suddenly from out of nowhere, on the hot run, and he turns out to be the most amazing, visionary, intelligent, cinematic making genius possibly the world has ever seen. Okay? This is very exciting. I mentioned this on Facebook earlier on, and this is true when I say the following. I love intelligence. Intelligence is a turn on. I used to read intelligent books to give me an erection. Yes, that's true. It's very embarrassing for me to say, and it's not a big erection. It's not, it's not a micro penis, it's just less than average, I might say, if I was being brave. But no. All they want to know is the size of my schlum. Whereas really, I have a cranium and a divine haloed mind from God the size of an augmented uber wonder of humanity. He dribbles down his front. He can't make shit up like that. You can't even, for good money, you can get that quality entertainment, man. That's why I'm worth it. Like L'Oreal. Because you're worth it. Because I am. I am worth, technically, X amount of money. It's impossible to put a value of actual money on how much I'm worth. I hear they insure that footballer's foot. For, uh, what's his name? Rishi Dishi? No, that's the Prime Minister. Ishi? Bishi? Wishi? Gishi? What's, the, what's his name? Lishi? Swishi? Swishi Wishi Dishi? No, what's the fucking guy's name? He, anyway, he's some player for somebody. He's just been bought from by Muslims or something for a lot of money. And they insure his foot for ridiculous amounts of money, right? And that, that's classic. Fred Astaire's legs were used to be insured for a lot of money. It's, it's the way things go for weirdos. <coughs> but the point is, if you do the sums correctly, truthfully, and with accuracy, you will know I am worth X amount of pounds. That X is an arbitrary value which can be scaled up or down to any number of relative arbitrary numbers and numerics and credit credentials. I am a wonderkind of truth in the divinity of knowledge under God. If but you knew the reality, the truth, the religious, and I will use that word, to convey the knowledge of God to the modern ignorati who haven't read the Bible and don't know what's going on. The word religion is mentioned in the Bible, funnily enough. And it's mentioned in the Gospels particularly. St. <coughs> Paul mentions religion. It's used hardly ever in the Bible. I think the word religion in the Bible <coughs> is only about in there about five times. Right? <coughs> but St. Paul speaks of another group's religion as being problematic, okay? So we learn from that that the very word religion in Christianity is not how we define the knowledge of God or ourselves under God with Jesus. <coughs> it's almost an opposite force, it's an outsider area. It's a non-bond, because religion technically <laughs> means to bond. James Bond, 007, 007, sacred Judean number. It all fits together when you know. He's done again. This is why I know a pool. I get too excited, too early on a Friday night, have a few early snifters, and go out, get excited about seeing, I don't know, a flea in a, a fucking flower bed or something. Go into a pub. I'm fucked by then. And I dribble down my whatnots. It's the most excruciating and humiliating aspect of my character when in the face of a beautiful fair maiden. But nonetheless, I have the courage to write poetry and love to those I care for and adore. Do you? Do you? Do you? Watch your rival. 